Hi all, Lee Veris here with another Phototech Tuesday. This one is actually a Photoshop rant. Each week I'll be bringing you another video exploring photo techniques, equipment, software, creativity, travel, and uh, more. Today I'm going to look at the new Photoshop beta and generative fill. And, and by now you've probably seen this remarkable AI rendering tool using the same technology as Midjourney, Stable Diffusion, and DALI inside of Photoshop. One of the challenges we face with any AI text prompt rendering system is getting adequate control over the process. I have joked that Midjourney is like communicating with a cat that has an idiot savant level of 3D rendering ability. If the cat understands your request, it may generate something interesting if it cares. A lot of the time, it just ignores you and does whatever it wants. Um, the way Adobe has implemented the AI text prompt rendering allows you to gain some measure of control over the process by utilizing partial selections. So let's take a look. So uh, we're going to look at this image. Uh, this was captured uh, in Iceland during one of our photo tours there in, in uh, 2021. Uh, this is my wife, the amazing Bobby Lane here in all her glory, standing on a lava field uh, that was uh, from that recent volcano that erupted there. And uh, it's actually kind of warm to the touch, this lava. She's just uh, walking out of here. And it, to me, this looked like it was on another planet. Right? So um, now I'm going to look at possibly creating an image of an astronaut walking on another planet here. So let's um, let's see what this generative fill is all about here. So you can see there's this new sort of task bar here. This this uh, this is a new feature and at the moment you can see it says select subject or remove background. Um, what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to select the whole thing and I can I can either do that just using the marquee tool or or just if I, if I do Command or Control A, I select the whole image. So I'm selecting the whole image here. And now you can see that it, it says, now instead of saying select subject, because we already have a selection, it says generative fill. So if I click on that and uh, I type what I want, so I'd, I'd like this image to be uh, an astronaut. on the surface of Mars, okay? So now once I've typed that in and there's this little generate button, I'm gonna click on that and uh, we'll see how fast my Intel Mac Mini manages to do this. Um, and I'll, all right, there you go. And uh, clearly the cat does not understand what the surface of Mars means. Uh, it's giving me an astronaut floating in space. And here's another one. You can see we've got three versions here. Fascinating. I mean, they're, they're, they're <laughs> almost photoreal. They're pretty close, uh, but they're not what I want. I want something that looks like my original here. Uh, I'd like this to be the astronaut standing on, on Mars. So, okay, that's not working. But here's, here's an interesting thing. If, if we change the selection, so I'm going to go ahead and reselect everything. Command and Control A. I've got the selection going. I'm going to hit Generate a Fill again eventually. But right at the moment, I have this selection represents 100% selected. The image is 100% selected. And we're going to do a little trick here so that we can limit how much of the image is selected. Um, I'm going to click on the Quick Mask tool. And this now converts that selection. Uh, and we're going to make sure it's selecting the background here. It converts the selection into an alpha channel. In fact, if we look at the channels panel over here, you can kind of see the Quick Mask is an alpha channel with everything is white because it's selecting the whole image. So when we're in quick mask mode, we can paint into the quick mask to alter the selection. 
or in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call up the curves dialog. So Command or Control M will pull up the curves dialog, and I'm going to darken this white fully selected mask to make it about 50% selected. So I'm just pulling that down until it says uh, over here, or right under output, it says 128 right there. Um, so you can kind of see now that it's gotten this sort of red cast because it's only, it's 50% gray. You can kind of see the quick mask now over here is like, it's gray, it's not white. So we're only selecting the image 50%. And uh, this does something very interesting with the, um, uh, with the generative fill. So let's go back to our layers here and I'm gonna exit the quick mask mode by clicking on that little uh, icon or you can type it the letter Q and it will drop out of the quick mask mode. And now I have the marching ants, but only 50% of the image is selected. And let's do the same thing. We'll click on generative fill. I'll say astronaut on the surface of Mars. And we'll click on generate. Let's see what happens. <laughs> okay. Um, interesting so it's sort of taken you know it's it's kind of fascinating about this is this first one is placing the figure in pretty much the same spot it's re-rendering the whole environment but it's sort of taking visual cues from the 50 percent of the image uh, that it's it's not selected it's kind of counterintuitive so um this allows me to use a reference image and get something that's a little closer to what the reference image looks like. However, we're running into the beta's uh, limitations in resolution. Uh, this, this Photoshop beta with generative fill, it only supports a thousand pixels as the maximum dimension in, in the image. And in this case, that gives us something that's just doesn't have doesn't have much detail or texture. It's kind of, you know, it's interesting, but this rock is very smooth because there isn't enough uh, resolution in it to, to provide that full um, uh, photographic reality. So, um, okay, so what am I going to do? I Maybe I want to leave Iceland alone because that looks pretty much like an, <laughs> you know, an alien planet. But I want to replace the figure with an astronaut. Okay, so let's now instead let's let's try um, uh, let's highlight the background layer and let's go ahead and select the subject. So I'm just going to click on this in the taskbar, and now we have a, a, a selection. You'll notice this this taskbar sort of jumped to get close to the area it's selected, and that's kind of annoying. They they they're still working on this. It's a, it's a, it's a beta. They do give you the ability to pin the bar location. So if I move it off to the bottom here and I highlight pin bar position, I can get it to stay there so it won't be jumping around all the time. Um, okay, so I have now a selection. I could modify the selection. I, it looks to me like we kind of missed uh, part of the shoe. I'm going to go ahead and. Uh, I'll just pick up a lasso here. It doesn't really matter much about the selection, but I want to I want to cover up the shoe, so I'm going to add, hold down the shift key and add to the selection, uh, just to cover that shoe. Okay, and now let's try our generative fill again, and astronaut on Mars. And let's generate. <laughs> so it's it's placed some kind of an astronaut there. They decided that it wants him walking away. So here's one that's he's he's facing me. And it's 
you know, it's pretty much in the same position. Looks like it's gotten a little skinny. Uh, and it is kind of a weird, you know, it's a weird figure. I could regenerate. Uh, if you just click on this again, it will give me three more um, versions. <laughs> and uh, pretty interesting, but none of this is what I want. And again, it's probably because I'm dealing with 100% selection. And so <laughs> you would think if you were selecting something 100%, that it would take 100% of that information and use it to generate something new. But that's not the case. So what we need to do is go back here. We're going to reselect the subject. See if it does a better job this time. Still missing that little shoe, but I'm going to cover that up anyway. It kind of doesn't matter, you know, how good the selection is, um, but I'm just going to make sure that all the salient uh, elements of this are fully selected. I'm going to do that trick again, and where we're going to get to 50% of this selected, not 100% of the subject. So we go into quick mask and you can see it's turning everything to that ruby lift. The red areas represent the black portions of the uh, alpha channel, which you can kind of see in this little thumbnail here. Uh, so what we're going to do is um, we're going to call up the curves again, command or control M. I'm going to reduce the white point, which is going to gray down that white selected area just to about 128. You can actually, we could do a little less than 50%. So if we go less than 50%, so that's darker than 50% luminosity, um, and we come out of the quick mask mode, you'll, you'll get this warning that no pixels more than 50% selected. So you're not gonna see the marching ants, but it's still that portion of the image that's selected and so we get this little generative fill button if I click on this now and I'll do my astronaut on Mars we'll generate <laughs> interesting okay so it's it's now kind of using more of what was there originally. Uh, I think I want a little more spacesuit. Select the subject first. Okay. Go ahead and cover up my parts that didn't make it. Get that camera in there. And now let's enter quick mask and we'll do the trick about darkening, but we won't go uh, less than 50%. Let's call up the curve. We'll go, you know, maybe like a little more than 50%. So it's, it's grayed down, but it's not all the way. And now I'll exit quick mask. I'll click on my generative fill. Astronaut. Mars, generate. <laughs> okay, a little more astronauty. It's kind of interesting um, when you get the handle of this. <laughs> I, I kind of like the way this looks, but the face is absurd, right? Let me just see how this lines up. Yeah, I think, I think we can make this work. I just want to remove the face. So um, I can just use the layer mask that's already there, or uh, I can use a secondary mask to mask off the face of this rendered figure and put my wife back in there. <laughs> so let's, let's do that. So here's a, a, a different way of doing this to preserve the layer mask that's already there. I'd say I don't want to edit that one but I can add an extra mask by using this new group from layers command here out of the, the layer flyaway menu here, new group from layers. And 
we'll just call that figure. So what it does is it puts this layer inside of this layer group and I can add a layer mask there and we'll brush, get the brush, I'm going to brush with black right where the face is. Might as well zoom in a little bit here. Yeah, we don't want this face. This face is bizarre, but my wife's face is right there. Yeah, well, let's brush back that. Okay, well, that was easy. So now she's wearing a spacesuit, and uh, <laughs> there you have it. So the takeaway here really is uh, how can we gain control over the AI rendering? Because you saw that if you leave it to its own devices, you're in a, you're in a constant loop of entering new text prompts, trying to control what it looks like struggling with how much it understands and clearly the AI didn't understand something as simple as saying astronaut on the surface of Mars. Okay, so we talk about artificial intelligence and basically a lot of the time what I see is artificial stupidity. So it can't quite understand um, all the text prompts and yet we, we jump through all kinds of hoops to try and make it do what we want it to do. But in this case, if we have a physical reference image, we can utilize these tricks of the uh, uh, partial selection by darkening down the selected areas. And then we can get a little more of that existing image to play into the new rendering. And, uh, you know, I could work this, you could saw, you saw how quickly this was handled. I could work this a little bit more and get more variations and really, you know, fine tune this quite a bit. Um, so it's really starting to become a very useful tool. And I'm really looking forward to how much uh, this is going to improve in the future. So anyway, um, that's, uh, that's all for today. And uh, if you like this video, be sure and hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to make sure you don't miss another Photo Tech Tuesday. Sometimes there'll be Photoshop rants, but uh, other, other times there'll be uh, other topics. So we will uh, we'll look at this AI rendering stuff again at some point in the future. But for now, have a good one, and I'll see you in the next Photo Tech Tuesday. Thank you.